All right, so a composition of transformations, it's really straightforward. It's a combination of transformations. So we're going to do one transformation and then we're going to do another transformation. Let's look at a transformation formula first. So this is pretty straightforward. The transformation matrix times the object is equal to the image after the transformation. Now, what about if I wanted to do a second transformation? Uh, where should I put that second transformation matrix once I'm done? I suppose one way to do it would be to do our second transformation. So if this was transformation one, so say a reflection, and then we wanted to do a rotation after that, we could do a second equation, right? We could say, right, now that I've done that, use this second transformation matrix, multiply it by the image, and that will give us an image of the image. Uh, that would be one way to do it, but we can actually squeeze it all into one single equation. So the faster way to do it is to do our second transformation times our first transformation times the object, and that's going to be equal to our image. Now, I'm not using a second dash there because this is the image after these two transformations. Now, we can go sort of one step further than that. I want to do that through an example. So this question says the following. Find the matrix that corresponds to a reflection in the x-axis followed by a 90 degree anti-clockwise rotation about the origin. So we're performing two, um, two transformations here. Reflection in the x-axis, that's number one. And then uh, the second one is a 90 degree anti-clockwise rotation. And that's transformation number two. So let's come up with what the full formula might look like. Uh, so transformation number two is the, the first one, the first one in our equation. So a 90 degree anti-clockwise rotation. Well, we're going to use our rotation matrix for that. I don't need to remember that. I've got that in my formula sheet. Uh, now it's cos theta, sine theta, negative sine theta, cos theta, and 90 degrees anti-clockwise, so 90, 90, 90, 90. That is my second transformation matrix. And the first transformation matrix is a reflection in the x-axis. Now, formula sheet doesn't help me too much with that. There's nothing on there about reflections in the x-axis, but I can handle that. Um, 1, 0 and um, 0, negative 1, that y-coordinate flips around. And then that's going to be multiplied by the object, and what I'll get is the image. Now, we can take matrix uh, T2 and matrix T1 and combine them into a single matrix. And once we combine that into a single matrix, we'll get our matrix, uh, our composition matrix, which is the combined one. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, I thought that the order that we multiplied things in mattered. I thought that we would have to multiply this by this and then this by whatever that result is. No, not quite. Now, it is true that order matters, which by that I mean matrix multiplication is not commutative, that is... A, B does not equal B, A. So we can't swap the order things are done in, but matrix multiplication is associative. That means that A, B, C equals A, B, C, and it doesn't matter where you put the brackets. It doesn't matter which one you do first. So commutative, no. Associative, Yes. All that goes to say that now I can just multiply these together to make my single transformation matrix. So I just need to turn all these into numbers. They're all going to be ones and zeros there. Okay, we get something that looks like that. And then we'll just do our matrix multiplication. We're going to get a bunch of zeros and ones again. And this is our answer. Okay, so what was that? What did I just find? Well, I just found something that would take a point, a single point, say this point here, and it would reflect it in the x-axis, so it would bring it down to here, and then it would rotate it um, 90 degrees. Now, if I were to rotate that 90 degrees, it would end up up here somewhere. And so it's moved through two points, moved through two uh, transformations, 
reflection and then rotation like that. Now, you might notice something here and you might remember that that, tra that function, tr that transformation matrix is actually a transformation matrix we already know about. Um, it takes a matrix, 1, 0, 0, 1, which is our starting matrix, and it flips it around. It's actually a matrix that reflects um, a point or any point or an object in the function y equals x or in the line y equals x. What does that mean? Well, that means that reflecting across the line y equals x is equivalent to reflecting in the x-axis and rotating 90 degrees, which feels about right. So it's important to note that um, some of these single transformations that you've learned can actually be expressed as a composition of multiple matrices. matrices. I'm going to show you this one here. Uh, find the matrix that corresponds to an anti-clockwise rotation of 90 degrees about the origin and then a reflection in the x-axis. Now that question should sound familiar because if you pair it to this, reflection in the x-axis, reflection in the x-axis, um, anti-clockwise rotation of 90 degrees, 90 degrees anti-clockwise rotation. So it's actually identical, uh, just to get the color right, it's actually an identical two um, transformation, but applied in different orders. And if we apply them in different orders, we won't be able to write it like this anymore. We'll have to spin that around. So the first thing we did, find the matrix that corresponds to an anti-clockwise rotation of 90 degrees about the origin, and then a reflection. So we need to do the first one last. So the first thing we're doing is an anti-clockwise rotation. So that's cos 90, sine 90, negative sine 90, cos 90. So that's the first one. And then we do the second um, the second transformation first. Reflection in the x-axis, 1, 0, 0, negative 1. Now, if we do our matrix multiplication, we'll get, I think, a different answer. We get 0, negative 1, negative 1, 0. And of course, that should look familiar as well. That combination of two functions is a reflection in y equals negative x. See if I can do that a little bit better. So if we had a point over here, it moves the point to there, which is the same as doing an anti-clockwise rotation uh, to there, followed by a reflection in the x-axis. You can see that that there. So um, not always, but often um, a combination of uh, transformations can be considered as a single transformation in some other way. Uh, also very important to note that it matters. It really matters what order you do these in and you do your first one on the right hand side and you do your second one on the left hand side and if you had a third one you'd do that one as well over there. So we're going to do another one here. Find the rule for the transformation that will reflect x, y in the x-axis and then translate the result left three units and up four units. So a little bit different here because there's a translation involved. So let's take a look. Uh, find the rule for the transformation that will reflect x, y in the x-axis. So if we want to reflect in the x-axis, uh, that matrix is going to be um, zero, oops, it's going to be one, zero, zero, negative one. Uh, and we're going to take that matrix and multiply it by whatever point we have. Now that would give us an image, right? But after I've done that, I need to do one other thing. I need to translate the result left three units. That means increase the x coordinate by three units. And I need to increase the, uh, and up four units, increase the y coordinate by four units. Okay, that's the order that I'm gonna do my matrix um, transformations in. Uh, so one times x, zero times y, that's gonna be x there. And zero times x, negative one times y, that's gonna be negative y. 
and I'm going to add 3, 4 there. What I get is um, x plus 3, uh, negative y plus 4. So um, I can now write that as my transformation rule. So x, y transforms to x plus 3. Uh, and negative y plus 4. And of course, we could do that, but we could do it in the opposite order. So if we were to do it in the opposite order, what would that look like? Well, first, we're going to have to do xy plus 3, 4. But then we're going to have to take that matrix, that new matrix, and multiply it by uh, our transformation matrix, our reflection matrix. And you can see I'm doing this bit first. So now I get 1, 0, 0, negative 1, and I'm going to multiply that by x plus 3, y plus 4. Now, what's that going to give me? Uh, 1 times x, 0 times y. Uh, sorry, 1 times x plus 3 is x plus 3. 0 times y plus 4 is um, 0. So I'm going to get x plus 3 on the top. And then uh, 0 times x plus 3, negative 1 times y plus 4, negative y minus 4. Be careful, that's a... Um, two by one matrix that's our or well, that's very close to being our rule x y transforms to x plus three negative y minus four and you can see that transformation is very close to that but it's negative y minus four not negative y plus four there all right lots covered there probably the major thing to remember is that you need to work backwards with these things a little bit. Uh, object, first transformation, second transformation, done.